Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and I am so glad that you're joining me today. Today is maybe a little bit of a heavier or more important topic to discuss within collecting houseplants. Anytime we collect something or we love something a lot, it can be very easy to feel burnt out or feel like we've gone a little bit too far and really aren't sure what to do to sort of go back to neutral and feel better about whatever it is that we're doing. So today we're going to be talking about what to do when you experience plant burnout. And mostly I just want to normalize feeling a plant burnout and just give you some tips on what to do when you do experience it so that all of your plants remain alive and happy and healthy and most importantly you also remain happy and healthy while you're collecting house plants if you're not already i'd love to invite you to subscribe to my channel i make primarily house plant videos but also some gardening videos during the summertime and i'd love to have you around here more often okay the first thing that i want you to know is that if you are feeling plant burnout right now well actually first of all should i define what that actually means so plant burnout is when you at one point were very very excited to collect houseplants you maybe purchased a lot at once maybe you are brand new to owning houseplants and you purchased a lot of plants at one time because it was very fun and exciting and now you're sort of feeling like perhaps you've made a grand mistake. <laughs> You're tired, you don't wanna take care of the plants, you find that it's a lot more work than you thought it would be, and just in general, you've sort of lost your love for houseplants. This could be a temporary situation, or this could just be the reality, and I want you to really dig down deep and think to yourself, and this might be something that you need to do over a period of time, but think about whether or not you need to break up with houseplants, or at least the amount of houseplants that you have. Is owning houseplants something that you feel is something you wanna continue doing? Or was this a phase? I think that it's important to also realize that at the beginning of this situation when you start to feel that burnout. I think it's very normal, especially in recent times, to hop around to a bunch of different hobbies. At least for me, I do that all the time, especially when I'm restless or, you know, last year we were all at home, so I picked up a few new hobbies and not all of them stuck. So I want you to also come to terms with that reality that you might just not want to have houseplants anymore and that's totally fine. Maybe you keep one or two, but you get rid of a lot of them and we're going to talk about that. In the video so now that we've defined what plant burnout is let's talk about how to feel when you're feeling houseplant burnout so first of all i don't want to tell you how to feel but i do want to tell you this i don't think that you should feel guilty for feeling this burnout feeling like you perhaps have gone a little bit too far because number one it's normal to feel overwhelmed when you've done a bit too much i don't think that i need to tell you that i think that's pretty obvious but if you are feeling overwhelmed by your houseplant collection and you maybe are starting to feel like oh my gosh maybe this isn't for me but deep down in your heart you know that it is but maybe you have a fleeting thought that you've made a grand mistake i'm talking about like imposter syndrome for yourself when you're owning plants like deep down you want to own plants but on the surface level you're like I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I think that's a pretty classic burnout situation. And I just wanna encourage you to feel those feelings, let yourself you know, go through the motions of understanding what that means. I experienced burnout a ton at my previous jobs. Like I was a teacher and then I worked in marketing. And both of those jobs, I experienced burnout quite a bit because I wasn't taking care of myself very well, um, physically and mentally. So I think that any type of burnout is usually a symptom of something bigger happening in your life. Maybe you have neglected yourself, which is honestly, pretty normal i think that a lot of people tend to do that sometimes and obviously i'm not a counselor or anything like that but in going through therapy myself i did learn that when i was feeling burnt out at work it was because i wasn't taking care of myself outside of work you know i wasn't adequately making sure that i was journaling i wasn't eating the right foods i wasn't getting enough sleep i don't know i just wasn't i didn't have very good habits in my life so if you are experiencing burnout with plants it could be a symptom of something bigger happening in your life something else that's being neglected in your life it could also be a symptom of overconsumption perhaps you're in this situation because you've bought too much at one time 
And I've certainly felt burnt out because of that, because you feel like you're constantly spinning your wheels. You always have a plant to water. You always have something, um, I don't know, always something to repot, always something to water, fertilize. And it feels like a lot of work. So I want you to first just like take a moment and breathe through that and think about why you might be feeling this burnout. Think about your lifestyle. Think about all of the things that are leading up to this moment and why you might be feeling that way. And just let yourself feel it, you know, kind of just sit in it for a bit and don't feel rushed to snap out of it. Because at the end of the day, if a plant dies while you are sort of figuring this out, that's okay. I always want to normalize putting yourself before your plants. Like, I feel like that is, that shouldn't be like, I mean, it's not a very deep thing to say, but I feel like a lot of the time, myself included, I will put everything before my mental health and making sure that I'm in a good place, including watering my plants. So like, <laughs> Recently, I've just let the plant go thirsty for a few extra days because I had other things to worry about mentally, emotionally, and everything else. And I think that you should too. It's okay. If you lose a plant, you lose the plant. There are certain plants that I will not do that with because they were very expensive, but on the regular, most of my plants are not very expensive and I could replace them very easily. So also think about that. The next thing I want you to think about when you're experiencing plant burnout is reconsider why you own house plants. I think it's important with anything in life to be in a consistent habit of checking yourself and you know asking yourself, why do I do this? Why do I own house plants? Why do I make clothes? Why do I eat fruit? Yeah, I don't know, like stuff like that. Maybe not the fruit thing. You eat fruit because it, it tastes good, but everything else. <laughs> Why are you doing certain things? Why are you working the job that you are? Why are you owning houseplants? If you're owning houseplants to keep up with trends, you know, you are trying to look after a new hobby. Are you trying to fill a void? Are you genuinely finding joy through taking care of plants? You know, these are all important questions to ask yourself to sort of recenter in why you're doing this in the first place. I mean, anytime I've ever felt plant burnout, it just was a good reminder to me that like, oh my gosh, I keep houseplants because it's my way of connecting with my ancestors and the people in my family. And maybe I'll get on the phone and talk about plants with my grandma, or I'll think about all of the women in my family who came before me who were gardeners. And it just reminds me why I do this. You know, for me, it's like a family legacy thing and it makes me feel connected to them. And that ultimately is what keeps me going. And of course, if there was a point where I just didn't want to have plants anymore, of course I would let myself not have plants anymore, but I know deep down in my heart that this is what I want to do and I feel really fulfilled in doing this. And so I'll recenter myself and think about my family and think about all the reasons that I own house plants. I think after doing De La Plants became my full-time job, it became a little bit more difficult for me to see it that way because it then became my income. And turning your hobby into an income is such a sticky situation and I never really wanted to be someone that did that because I love my hobbies for what they are and that's why I've kept sewing to be just a hobby. I mean, I don't really like sewing for other people or selling things that I make. I really don't generally enjoy that. Sometimes I do, but usually not. And that's because it's my thing, it's my hobby. And I think for so long, houseplants was my thing and my hobby as well. And now I get to share it with all of you, which is really exciting. But with that, I have experienced a little bit more plant burnout because it's now intertwined with my livelihood and how I keep myself afloat and able to live the life that I do. So for me, it's always important, especially now to bring myself back to that question. Why am I even collecting house plants? So if you need to write that down in a journal, I would really suggest journaling in general, just as a life tip. I've been journaling since I was like, I don't know, in elementary school, I actually found an old journal from fifth grade and it was so funny, but also it was really sweet to think of myself like writing to the future me um, 25 year old me sitting in my house doing some decluttering and I find this journal from literally 2007 or something and it was just really special and I can imagine that when I'm much much older looking back at my journals from now when I was 25 it'll feel even more special because I have like actual thoughts and feelings and I don't know I always find my journals to be a really special thing to keep so if you aren't a journaler I would suggest taking it up even if it is like digital journaling like online 
um, well maybe not online, but like on a Word document or something, just having a way to put your feelings on paper and your thoughts and everything else I think is super important. But anyway, so take time to think about why you wanna own house plants and just get back to the basics, I think. Just get back to why you do this and how it makes you feel when you take care of plants and really focus on that. My next tip for overcoming a plant burnout is to just get rid of some of your plants. Usually when we experience plant burnout, it's because we have too much going on. So number one, I have a lot of plants and it's not until recently that I've really, really felt like I need to get rid of some. In the past, I've had like, oh, maybe one or two plants I should get rid of. But now I feel like I wanna get rid of quite a few. And I feel like a lot of people who are on YouTube doing houseplants have been on the same sort of timeline. So you might actually see this as a trend. A bunch of people that you're following might be getting rid of a lot of plants right now because we're sort of hitting that couple of year mark where we've been collecting and it's less so this really exciting shiny new thing and more so something that's completely integrated in our lives and we want to figure out how to make this a sustainable practice hopefully for the rest of our lives and honestly having 200 300 plants is not a sustainable practice for me maybe it is for you and for others but for me i feel like i can do about a hundred but beyond that it feels like too much and like my house is being taken over by plants and it's in those moments when i think to myself wow i have way too many plants that i feel that burnout feeling like creeping up you know and so something that i do to combat that is to just get rid of plants and whether that be selling them online selling them in a plant group giving them to a friend or just throwing them in the trash i know I know, I used to feel really, really guilty about doing that, but honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes when you're experiencing that plant burnout, you're experiencing like a bout of depression, obviously, maybe not obviously, but I've talked about my anxiety and depression before, and when those things hit me, I don't have the capacity to list a plant online, sell it, ship it, meet up with somebody. I just don't, and so, you know, sometimes the plant just goes in the trash. And my friend Adam gave me the advice to throw the plant away the day that you take your trash out so that you don't have to see it <laughs> sitting in the trash for any longer than you need to. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to recommend that you do that every time, but if it is between you having like a good or bad mental health day or you experiencing or not experiencing plant burnout, just throw it away. Seriously, put it outside, let the elements take it. Um, maybe if you live in a neighborhood, put it on a little table and say free plants. I've seen people do that too. That seems pretty low effort. But in general, I just want you to know that getting rid of plants when you're in that space is probably the best thing for you because maybe not all of them, obviously not all of them, but like some of them, the one of, you know, the ones that aren't really sparking joy anymore, the ones that feel like a really big hassle to take care of. Of course, I have some plants that are a huge hassle to take care of, but I still keep them because it feels worth it to me. But there are other plants that are a hassle and don't feel worth it. And I would love to just toss them in the trash and not have to worry about it. So if that is going to help you with your burnout situation, I would suggest just do it. You know, try to sell them and rehome them when you can. But at the end of the day, if it's just not working out, you don't have the capacity to do it, just throw them in the trash. It's fine. I know I'm, I'm just positive somebody is going to have something negative to say about that. And maybe in a different headspace, I would too. But when you're in that state of like burnout, it's a plant and you are so much more valuable. You, your loved ones, your pets, people who actually genuinely need you on a daily basis are much more important than the plant that you can replace in five minutes on a trip to the garden center, you know? Obviously we should always care about our plants and have you know, a relationship with them. But if there's a plant where you just feel like you need to break up, just throw it away. <laughs> And my last piece of advice for overcoming plant burnout is to get back to the basics and do the plant things that you like. So for me, the things that I like with plants is rearranging them. So whenever I feel like my space is new or different, that makes me want to take care of my plants a little bit more. It makes me more interested in them. So maybe I will move all of the plants to the center of the room and set them all up in different places. This room pretty much stays the same just because of, you know, the plants like where they are in all of the places. But at the same time, 
before the winter happens, I'm probably going to do just a little bit of rearranging just to change things up. You know, we love a little bit of change and I think that it's important to bring that change in your life, um, whether it be rearranging your house plants or rearranging your furniture or whatever it may be, getting a new art piece in your home. I think that going back to the basics and just moving things around maybe if you enjoy watering you know take some time to intentionally water your plants bring them to the sink and water them thoroughly give them a really really deep drink while you're there wash the leaves you know just do things that make you feel connected to your plants and that oftentimes really really helps me to feel a little bit better about my situation if i am feeling a little bit burnt out from plants it just helps to know that i still am able to have a connection with the plants i'm still able to love them and care for them i would also say take note of any new growth that's happening even if that is just like going around and looking at it maybe taking a photo and putting it on your instagram even if nobody else is gonna care <laughs> i think that it's so sweet to see somebody really care about something and feel i don't know fired up about something that they love so i feel like maybe you're Instagram followers might even be inspired to have houseplants because of you. And if you have a plantstagram, even more fun because then you're gonna have people like reacting to your photo and being like, good job. And that's always a good feeling, right? Like validation from the internet, the best. <laughs> I say while I'm on my YouTube channel posting this. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. I just want you to take time to get back to the basics. And while you're thinking about, you know, why you own houseplants, think about the specific houseplant things that really make you feel good. Maybe go walk around a plant nursery, but don't buy anything because you're overwhelmed, remember? <laughs> but maybe go walk around a plant nursery and just see and visit all of the beautiful plants and just kind of remind yourself that this is a really fun and beautiful thing. And if after all of this, you're still not feeling it, maybe give it a couple days, maybe a couple months. And maybe houseplants just aren't for you. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that the expectation that everybody will have like hundreds of houseplants in their home is super unrealistic and that is not the case for most people. I know that a lot of YouTubers and people who post their lives online do have that and it's kind of similar like lifestyle influencers who are always buying new clothes and stuff that's not really realistic you know the average person does not buy clothes that often so i want you to know that if you have like three four or five plants you're in great shape like it, you do not need to have a collection comparable to your favorite plant youtuber because i have personally made this like the center of my life pretty much i bought a house with plants in mind so you know, it's kind of like shaped my life in ways that I would never have expected. This room right here was a big reason why we bought this house. <laughs> and you know, I just want you to know that not everybody is going to have a life like that. And it's not realistic for every person who watches my channel to have a life similar to mine. So I don't want you to get caught up in the, compa in the comparison game because I know with other YouTube niches, like I love YouTube, I watch YouTube all the time. So I'm, that's why I'm drawing from this conclusion. And I guess if you're watching this video, you probably watch YouTube a lot too. But you know, some people I watch are always buying new clothes. They're always getting new shoes. I don't know, it's just new home decor. It's just not realistic. Like I don't like buying home decor that much. I want my house to look nice, but I don't feel like I need to switch out the art prints in my frames every quarter. And that's what a lot of people who do lifestyle content do because this is their job. And you know, they wanna have new fun things in their home, but the average person does not need to do that or does not want to do that, me. <laughs> so I can only imagine what it's like to watch somebody like me having only like, I don't know, a handful of plants and maybe feeling pressured that you need to buy more. You need to get the Ikea greenhouse. You need to get this and that and fill your sunroom and everything else. You don't need to do that, okay? So anyway, wow, I'm really going on for way too long about this, but I just want you to feel encouraged to know that, you know, whatever you are going through with your plants, you will get through it. If you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling like you might be getting close to plant burnout, just take some time away from your plants to think and do some journaling and do some self-reflection about what this means for the rest of your life. You know, what other parts of your life are feeling a little bit overwhelming as well. Okay, you guys, that is all I have for this video. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. These are honestly my favorite types of videos to film and I hope that you enjoy them too. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I do these chats every once in a while just to refresh and and just remind ourselves that owning house plants is not all about buying plants. You know, it's not all about consumerism. It's mostly for me about 
feeling things and having a relationship with my plants and understanding their needs and just integrating them into my daily life, you know? So I hope that you found that in this video that, you know, whatever feelings you might be feeling are valid and okay and just feel them. Ride it out. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.